five between FMW and the Juicy Kids with the commentary. Lawler and Quinn Lobdell, take it away, guys. Yesterday, we saw a lot of teams that came in against big upsets, Quinn. Oh, yeah, big time. But when they got to the match that really mattered, they fell just short. Do we think we're going to see that again, or will the Juicy Kids be the ones that fall short themselves? I think Juicy Kids are going to pull this one out. I got my money on them. I mean, Claire, no, he, he's a beast. I don't know if you've ever watched him stream. I mean, even since the very old days, like, he hosts me a lot, and it, it means a lot. I need it. <laughs> yeah. Either way, his <laughs> skill is, is seriously fantastic. He's an amazing player, and he's got, you know, wonderful mechanics. Kind of reminds me of, like, a Lachino type of player as far as enjoyment and watching, just someone yeah. who does a lot of really aesthetically pleasing stuff. Yeah, he's uh, always been pretty strong. Obviously, he's always been overshadowed primarily by the other guys on Penta with Freaky, as we saw earlier, and we saw his other teammate earlier, too. So it's one of those situations where he has always kind of taken that back runner mm -hmm. in the side of play, but... Um, Stocky, they mentioned on the desk, has been around for a very long time as well. Yeah, and Stocky, like Gibbs said, I mean, been around since, but all these guys really been around since, I mean, I think even Sarp Vets, Yeah, I believe. So th that's pretty much as old as you can get if you play the prequel. So uh, these guys are going to be, you know, experienced players. I'm going to be expecting good things from them. Yeah, it's one of those situations as well, like, there's going to be a clear difference in skill, in my opinion. Obviously, these guys have been able to take out and knock out a team with other veterans of the mm -hmm. game, too. So um, it's going to be an interesting situation. But um, the EU side has never failed to upset us or surprise us or have upsets, for that matter. So who knows what's going to happen? Filled with upsets, but n not us. Yeah. Game one of the series between the Juice Kids and FMW. This is an RLCS qualifying match. Winner moves on. Loser goes home. As Killer No plays that down into the middle. It's gonna settle in front. We have Frag playing, it looks like, instead of Coca. As the ball comes across, off that backboard, a shout out. Killer number seven right there to receive it. The save from CKS. Trying to get those feelers out. Saki using his teammate as a passing tool, but he's unable to connect as a shot comes across from Wolfrider just wide. But the pressure now switching in favor of FMW. Doing a good job of stopping it as it goes up those walls, playing it right back in, even though it's not a maintain of possession. It allows them to rotate back in and try again. As the ball played high and far over to the other side. CKS is gonna be the first one to get to it, just plays it inside but nothing really coming from it as we transition back in favor of the juicy kids frag trying to go for a second touch doesn't get it killer no playing it down in front of the net and all three players grouped up not having any troubles making that save yeah it was it was a good attacking presence here we've actually seen oh this could be a goal here <gasps> okay <laughs> i had to hold my breath there for a second i thought i thought frag was just kind of jumping the gun there and rotating a little bit too early and he did actually just kind of misreading that bounce there but Clarno number seven, obviously there for an easy cleanup. Uh, it, it's been a bit of a messy game so far already. I mean, we've seen overcommits on the side of uh, the Juicy Kids and FMW, even though they had so much pressure, really unable to make anything happen. Well, Stocky is going to see if they can snag another one in here, passing that around one. This killer now follows up his own hit. Frag is getting demoed by Wolf Rider. Passes off from CKS, allowing his teammate behind him to go for the play as he moves across to deny some boost from the Juicy Kids. Quick aerial contest from CKS doesn't work out as Killer Number trying to get a redirect into the back of the net. Can't find the hit just yet, but being a bully on his way back, two bumps into MX, which allows them to retain possession. As the Juicy Kids move up field, a pass inside. Frank trying to go for the shot, doesn't get the redirect, but it almost sneaks past the defense of FMW. I already like seeing all this, all these passes center field before they get to the corners here, coming out of the Juicy Kids. Really just good uh, distribution of the ball and putting the ball center that early on in. Oh! Wolf Rider with a shot, able to sneak that one in. You see Stocky trying to clear that out. Had a good push off that back wall, but unfortunately it sneaks past and hits the back end of his car and plays yeah, directly it out. Like, yeah, definitely a missed touch there. He would have preferred a different type of clear. Although it did come quite far off the wall, it wasn't the touch he was looking for and put himself out of position, not buying enough time for his team. He still had that jump available as well. He wanted it to hit the bumper of his car and then push into it. 
Would have been a relatively good clear, but mistakes do happen. One of the differences between the pros, they minimize those as much as possible as a shot comes out from Frag. Not able to find the back of the net. A long clear, but the rotation from Frag able to swing all the way around and make the save. Skillino plays that high and wide upfield. CKS there to meet it. But both teams doing a relatively good job getting to that secondary oh, touch. Just one around the corner. Can Frag go? go he goes the for fake. the delay, the fake. And in, almost saved by MX-22, but they snag a goal for the Juicy Kids. Yeah, really well done that. Getting that double touch, pulling out two defenders, and also taking his time instead of just shooting right away. It was actually what he had to do that he needed to sell that ball to regain control. But just faking out every single member on FMW. To have the confidence and the foresight to make a play like that at this kind of level of pressure, I mean, unbelievable. It goes back to what you were saying earlier about the, him being a Sarp vet. I mean, just so much experience. Even though maybe he hasn't been playing as much lately, maybe his mechanics are a little bit rusty. Either way, the experience is there, and that helps you in situations like that on how to beat defenders. Oh, looks like Frank's gonna have another opportunity, but he passes it oh, over to Killer. Great oh, really? pass. Great trap as well. Unfortunately, Killer with that pass up to himself, not able to get another touch off of it. But the aggression from Stocky setting up Killer number seven and a save from CKS, allowing them to stay within one with 1.18 left on the clock in game number one here, this best of five. Winner gets into the RLRS. As Wolfrider puts a shot on the net. Frag able to play that back outside, but Wolfrider chases it down quite well to pinch it inside. As the ball centers in favor of the Juicy Kids. It does seem to be that they are definitely aware of that clock. They're just trying to kill this time with lofty clears. Nothing too constructive otherwise. As MX comes in with a bump. We change, change over possession to FMW. Yeah, there's been a lot of pressure here from FMW on the Juicy Kids, but Juicy Kids dealing with it really well. Moving that ball side to side laterally. Oh, pass into the corner just off the crossbar. Almost able to sneak that one in and almost close the series out. But you talked about it there just a little bit ago. That transition of pressure, they handle it well, and then a quick counterattack as Stocky trying to sneak another one in. The ball actually bounces up and hits him. Very confusing play all around. 15 seconds left. FMW needs to make something happen as a team pass clear. Up top handled again well by the Juicy Kids. Five seconds left on the clock, but it looks like the Juicy Kids are gonna be able to handle it. Oh, a pass over the top. Can MX play that down a little bit too high? Wolf Rider just needs to be patient. He puts it oh. in, oh, and he misses the hit. That was his opportunity. Heartbreak on zero second time there. For FMW, he had the ball in control of it on the goal line, but unable to get that last touch. And it wasn't the easiest, but you would assume to get into the RLRS, you would need to be able to convert a goal like that. Oh, it's got to be frustrating just a little bit more to the left. We'll take a look of, at a replay of it in just a second here, but those plays and how much they spell the difference. I mean, you're talking that completely could change the entire aspect of the game. You see it here, the ball's cleared down to one this side. Is the double touch. Oh, yeah, that was so well done And then done the fake. There. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, nope, nope. Okay, I'm just going to play it up over the top. And MX was, like I said, pretty dang close to getting into that. Super close to getting the ability, but Frank actually got a jump reset on that too, technically. Well, I don't know if it, I don't know if that was a jump reset. I think it hit the bottom of his car, but it wasn't all four wheels. And, and actually, there's a really awkward part of your car where if you just hit it directly in the it center, kills of the belly, it kills it completely. No, 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 no. It, it just like cannons off of your car, and that's why like sometimes you'll see redirects coming in off of the bottom of your car with so much power. It's a very like yeah, it doesn't it has to hit, like, hit. It has to hit, like perfectly square. It's like right in the yeah. center of your car and then not touching the wheels, obviously. And usually. Usually if you move your car like forwards and backwards, it's a little easier to hit. But either way, I mean, getting that double touch there and the fake at the end, just fooling all three of those defenders, I mean, making a case for why they deserve to be in the RLRS. Yeah, I mean, we talk about these series where it usually comes down to just one player really stepping up. And despite that, like, all the players are playing well, but Prague is definitely creating opportunities for his team. Yeah, I think that... FMW is not def or not totally out of this by any means whatsoever. We did actually see a, a little bit of communication problems coming from the Juicy Kids. You could see them over committing. There was a couple moments where you would see someone take the ball off of another person and, and, and just dispossess them for no reason whatsoever. And that was causing the team to be mispositioned. But 
as time went on, they did kind of iron out those problems. But there are opportunities here for FMW, is what I'm trying to say. There are mistakes for them to capitalize on. Well, a double commit there spells an opportunity as Stocky plays that oh. over, just barely missing. Off FMW giving a gift to get out of this one, and then a long, clear opportunity for them. But again, Juicy Kid's pushing that right back in. I cannot believe they got away with that one. Killing all, grabbing some boost and just killing that, making one player commit. Allows his teammate to rotate in and completely play that back downfield, but MX doing a good job of a solo play. Slows it down, a pass inside. Beautiful pass to CKS in the middle. They're on the board one minute in. Yeah, this was a good play here from MK22, but it felt like that there was just no defense here. Stocky on his com or by his complete self here. He had to get a touch there on the ball. He didn't. You saw just a simple uh, ball crossing the goal line, but you would expect better from Stocky in that situation. It felt like that was definitely his ball there to make the clear. Well, I do feel credit does go to MX as well. He played that very yeah. well up on the wall. He controlled the pace. He slowed it down. And then that pass a little bit further out, making it difficult for that defender. So well done by him, trying to create opportunities for his team and them definitely paying off. As the Juicy Kid's back on offense, Frey goes with a good contest, but MX reads it well, another long clear into the corner, trying to get a secondary touch on it. But Stocky able to beat him, Wolfhardt puts a shot, two players committing on defense, but it doesn't matter, his killer's able to just immediately pop out and get demolished as the difference in play from FMW, trying to hold on to this lead. Played into the corner, CKS going for a redirect, a lofty touch. As it now allows Juicy Kids, all three members trying to move downfield. Red well again by MX, all over and in front of the net. Fortunately, not able to connect with that pass. Pass across the middle from Stocky to Killer. No, Killer with a shot again, oh. hitting the crossbar. These shots just so close, but not finding the back of the net. Yeah, it was a great read there from Clareno on that on the sidewall. I mean, the self pass to himself it was a typical read to get, especially so high up in the air. But coming in off that crossbar, like you said, so so close. That's the second opportunity now. It seems just you know so tantalizing, right, dangled right in front of their faces. Oh, a shot from Frank, oh, barely pitched out by Wolf Rider, but played immediately back in. Killing all does not get the hit. That could have been their opportunity, but Frag using that second jump to push it a little bit forward. But it does not pan out. FMW once again holding off the Juicy Kids, who are up in the series 1-0 in this best of five. First to three, winner goes to the RLRS. As we have two minutes left in this match, FMW trying to hold on. Juicy Kids not making it easy. A couple of these shots just a little bit off as Killino tries to put another shot on net. You almost have Frag coming across to play that in, but the positioning on defense has been pretty solid from FMW. Oh, great patience there from Stocky, expecting the, the touch there from MK22 and letting him hit it into him for a free pass. It just seems to be a lot from FMW where there's times where it looks like things are going to be in trouble and then someone sweeps in to save the day as CKS puts a shot top left, it hits the post, oh, it bounces out and it's saved. Another play coming in and now they have a chance to transition. Frag's going to get into it, win this 50-50. No, MX gets it around. But luckily for the Juicy Kids, Killer Noah is back on the other side. But contested in the midfield well by FMW. Oh. Doesn't matter, Stacky plays it over the top. We're all tied up. Yeah, great touch here from Stocky to actually beat two defenders. You can see CKS, that touch just go a little bit too far. And coming all the way out of the goal, I think I'm just gonna have to disagree with that decision there. There was already one person challenging that ball, and if there was anybody else in the net, that would have been a very simple aerial save. Just getting a little bit too over here there to make something happen. One of those situations as well, you need to back up in the goal, give yourself as much space to make a play, whether you need to boost up, make a jump, whatever it may be. But with one minute left on the clock in game number two, we're all tied up. The win for Juicy Kids here would put them at match point to get into the RLRS. As a contest comes out, CKS, almost a dangerous spot there. As he plays it over the side, luckily it doesn't go in his own net. A back pass to Killino, who's actually retreating as well. This could be an opportunity for FMW. Wolf Rider pops over the top, Stocky with an easy save and another pop afterwards. A big solo clear giving his teammates the opportunity to get in position. Really no, trying to get the contest, it actually pinches against the other way, and now we're back in favor of FMW. 
20 seconds on the clock. Saki's gonna slow it down a little bit, tries to beat L1, but Wolf Rider gets a piece of it. And immediately up is MX22. As he tries to play this around. The pace of the game definitely changing up here compared to game number one. Yeah, game number one, you saw FMW playing so much more aggressive and, and actually a lot more level-headed. In, in game number two, we see them overcommitting time and time again. And it's it's kind of shocking to see the GC kids haven't actually been able to punish it yet. How often FMW have overcommitted three people to the same ball? Well, in game number two, we're into overtime here. CKS gonna play that high and down, trying to draw somebody out of the defense. Delino pops it up, Frag following closely, gets a piece of it, but doesn't push it downfield. Once again, this team doing a great job shadowing each other to play it across, down in front of the middle. Delino making a good decision, just rotate out. He knows he's not gonna make anything happen with that touch. And puts himself back on defense, gives himself the opportunity to make a save here. But Stocky gonna be the one who gets it. Two overlapping, need to be careful as this could spell trouble, but Stocky's able to break it out. Craig coming through, plays it over the top of MX. Needs one more touch Whoa, to play what inside. A touch. Straight to Killer, no. And the 1 2 pass play from Juicy Kids puts them one away from match point. Yeah, just an absolutely beautiful touch here from Frag. The self pass from himself allows him to actually come in from the side and get enough power to put that over the defender. So well done there from Frag. Just an, completely removing the defender from the equation there. Really good individual play to take that into his own hands and create an opportunity. But the same score line as game number one, Quinn. Between these two teams, very, very close. This one obviously even closer going into overtime, but once again, one individual play coming out from Stocky to give them the victory. Yeah, I, I don't think that it was all on Stocky, actually. I would say Frag seems to me to be the, the most impactful on the team here for the Juicy Kids. We've actually seen Stocky, you mentioned it. Uh, we've seen him overlap twice now, especially yeah. on Kalerno, and it's been putting him completely out of position and causing a little bit of confusion. I'm wondering, is that going to come back to bite them in game number three? So far, we've seen both teams missing out on opportunities to just punish the other team for mistakes. We've seen overcommits from FMW, and then we've seen... Uh, juicy kids, you know, just kind of overlapping each other and mispositioning a little bit too much. But with that being said, I mean, I definitely think that Juicy Kids, as predicted, really kind of deservedly been dominating the match. It's been a struggle for FMW to gain control, to really not much team clears, a lot of solo plays. Right, and that's I guess that's going to be the difference for this next match coming up. Is FMW going to be self-aware of that situation? These guys are stacking up. All I need to do is beat one, and I beat both. And if they can take advantage of that situation, like you're saying, they haven't really done that yet. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I, th I think that it could just be potentially nerves here, but we're going to have to see if they can make anything happen in this game number three. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Match point for the Juicy Kids. They win this one. They're into the RLRS. As for FMW, they're going to have to do something that hasn't been done yet today, a reverse sweep, something not easily accomplished, especially against a roster like the Juicy Kids. This frag. Stays up high on that wall, tries to come crashing down, does not get the hit, but flies across to deny some boost. Stocky gonna play this high and far, beats over one, actually touches that backwards back to Killer Doll, but baits him into getting demoed by a, a rotating Wolf Rider. Ball goes up high, and he places that down in the field. As FMW tries to rotate back into that. Stocky almost up top, but the ball not going over to his side. 40 seconds has gone by. Still pretty predominant on the Juicy Kids as they put a shot far oh. post. Does not sneak it in so close. Again, not able to find the back of the net. This MX and the rest of this FMW team starting to look like they're under quite a bit of pressure. You can tell in their touches, they're very rushed. As the ball plays over into the middle. MX-22 able to play that downfield with the help of Wolf Rider for backing him up. You're starting to see smart decisions. CKS was trying to cheat up on that one, immediately recognizes he cannot get to it. Backs off, puts himself in position, and allows his ball to stay at the midfield. Rotation's cleaning up a little bit from FMW. Wolf Rider plays that back on top of the backboard. MX trying to get a shot, but cannot find the angle he's looking for. As everybody on the Juicy Kids crashes into the net, they're moving off the field. Killino grabs the boost, plays it over in the middle, but Frag isn't going to be able to get there. Swings wide, doesn't get the boost either, and CKS going to sneak past every single one of them. No, it's just wide again. 
both of these teams getting so close to getting a goal, but just can't sink it in. It's the stacking defense of the Juicy Kids holding on to this unscored game. As a demo comes out, a double demo, one for each team, but Stocky gets the bump, passes it back inside to Killino. Can Killino sneak it in? No. Last second rotation from the demo to CKS. Another shot from Frag going to sneak oh. it in, and eventually the pressure gets to FMW. Yeah, great follow up there off of Killino number seven's shot. I mean, that just puts the ball right up in the air, and we see MX22 time just drive straight past the goal and not stop to follow it up. That defensive mistake is going to cost them the lead, or the goal, a goal, excuse me, and gives the lead to the Juicy Kids. Saki over to the wall. Bumps CKS even though he gets the boost. And it decides that Killer wants to go get other boosts, but Stocky has plans to kiss him instead. Stops him dead in his tracks. That's a good flick up to Wolf Rider from CKS. Not able to get there in time as Frag reads it pretty well. Another clear out in the middle of the field. 50-50 win. Bumps coming out, aggression play starting to happen, and Whoa, another shot, what? but that went directly on point by Stocky. What placement here from Stocky? Such a boomer of a shot here. You just see him going up from all the way from his own oh, side that as last well. Minute air, oh, that air roll too to get that extra power. Last second. Oof. Beautiful shot by Stocky, putting them up by two. Two fourteen left in the match. Trying to close this one out and give him a spot in the RLS, but a fake kickoff coming out from FMW trying to trade it up giving up possession so they can maintain it afterwards. But a quick transition down to the field. If this one goes high, it's going to be difficult for Frag to hit, but he still makes the touch and in. What a shot from Frag there, putting on a clinic. Yeah, again, another really quick follow-up. The read ahead of time. You saw he pre-jumped for that ball. He recognized it going up the wall there. And it just gives almost no time for the defense to orient themselves for that shot. Well done from Frag. Just take this game by storm. To make that correction mid-air and get that angle easier for them to be on top, but almost a quick response from CKS. Again, missing just wide, but the pressure starting to come up from FMW. You can tell they're feeling it and trying to make something happen. As a mistake opportunity, nobody there to fix it. Killer plays it out. CKS trying to play it into MX, who's rotating as well. They stopped as well. Really doing a good job on that 50-50 win, buying his team some time, but a quick lofty shot and in from MX, back within two. Yeah, they're going to be able to make something happen here, but they're going to need to follow up with something else more. That backward pass, so, so good. Frag just unable to do anything, coming in backwards. It's such a difficult save to make. There was just nobody there left to help and sort that situation out there for the Juicy Kids. Really tough weave, uh, Reed, but at least he's willing to put his body in the way in hopes of something possibly going in his favor. 120 left on the clock. Frank's trying to play that up to Stocky. But the defensive FMW able to stop it pretty easily as the clear comes off that back wall into the middle. CKS has an option. He backflips, fakes one out, but Stocky there to make the save. MX with another touch. Can he get the double? No, just a little bit too high. Doesn't have the boost to make a play. And a quick pinch from Stocky over to Killer to transition that back downfield. Frag with a shot, gonna hit crossbar over the top of that backboard. Wolf pinching it off the ceiling and in, but Stocky, quick and easy touch over to the corner. It's just a matter of killing this time now, being up by two. Was that in? Oh, off the crossbar. Wolf had an opportunity there. Played it a little bit too high. Got under the ball a little bit too much, so plays it up high. But the more and more this ball is elevated, the more and more time goes by in favor of the Juicy Kids. With being down by two, this FMW team needs a goal quickly so they can use that zero second time when the ball is not touching the ground. Trying to go for fake, a soft touch, only one back, but now the possession switched over. They have all the time in the world. Eight seconds left on the clock. Stocky passes that in, read by Wolfrider. Can MK get, or MX get across? No, he makes the touch and a save, but with only one second left on the clock and not possible to score two goals. The Juicy Kids are going to be your next team in the RLRS. Yeah, congratulations to the Juicy Kids. It seemed like they really had, you know, control for the most part. I'd say games two and three were all the Juicy Kids. Game number one, I felt FMW started off really, really well. We saw them putting out so much pressure, challenging the ball very, very quickly, not letting Juicy Kids really do anything that they wanted to, just 
limiting them incredibly well. Unfortunately, as the series went on, we saw that control just kind of uh, they, they're grasped less and less and over the country, or over the match, excuse me. Yeah, it's one of those situations, too, when you're playing against a team like the Juicy Kids. When you make these opportunities happen and you just can't find the back of the net over and over, it gets demoralizing. It gets, mm -hmm. it gets defeating. And they became a little bit more deflated towards the end there. And you saw that the Juicy Kids just got more confident. They were spreading out the field. They weren't being contested as heavily as they were in Game 2. And they took full advantage of it. Yeah, and especially with Frag coming in so, so hot. That guy had an absolutely incredible performance. So well done to you, Frag. I mean, really just putting his team in a position to succeed time and time again. Congrats again to the Juicy Kids. But that's going to do it for me and Quinn. Back to you guys over at the desk. Yeah, another team making it into the rival series. That's the Juicy Kids taking out FMW in pretty convincing fashion. Another sweep, again, to secure their spot in the rival series. Congrats to you guys, the Juicy Kids. Let's take a look at the Mobile One high performance replay from that match and get a recap on exactly how the Juicy Kids were able to secure that spot. It was a really close series for at least goal scoring. 2 1, 2 1, 3 1. I felt like the Juicy Kids did control the series, but I think this is why they're a rival series team. It's those finishing touches. I think Waller brought it up before. Like, you have to make sure you get those finishing touches. That's how you get into the championship series. We saw a lot of close calls from both teams. A lot of posts were hit, like, and sometimes two posts on one shot. So, you just got to clean up those finishers for, uh, for Juicy Kids, and they might have a shot here. I mean, even uh, if you just look at the shot differential, 20 shots total for FMW and 23 for Juicy Kids. So, overall, the shots were really close. Only three more shots for Juicy Kids, but four more goals total. So, they were able to find the back of the net more often, which means they were either being more creative or just a bit more consistent and breaking that defense down apart. But they also had more saves. They had 12 saves compared to nine. So, they were still on defense their fair share. Uh, but I think Juicy Kids' defense just showed to be a bit more calm, a bit more consistent, and they were able to come out on top each game. So it seemed like FMW, they had 20 shots, and Juicy Kids had 12 saves. So you would think, hey, that's eight goals. But they only scored three. So that's where all those posts came into play. So posts will be credited for shots. So they hit at least five posts, if not more. So uh, uh, FMW was close, but they needed to finish those goals to have any chance in the series. just didn't happen. I think Quinn was talking about that, too. You know, how demoralizing it can be or how tough it can be. Making a lot of good shots, applying a lot of pressure, but really not able to get anything in. At the end of the day, you got to score those goals to succeed in Rocket League. But uh, awesome stuff from the Juicy Kids, able to qualify. I'm sure they're excited, very excited about that, uh, getting into the rival series. H how do you think this team stacks up, especially against uh, perhaps those teams that are in the championship series? Where, uh, where do you see the Juicy Kids, and how do you expect them to fare in the rival series? So I think Juicy Kids would probably be on the lower end of the rival series. I don't expect them to battle for top two. But again, who knows, right? There's going to be a lot of different styles in the Rival Series, so they might have a chance. At least they're playing for $50,000, which is nice compared to just going home with nothing. So it should be a lot of fun for them there. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe they'll grow into it. Frag seem to be playing really well for them, so you never know. Yeah, I think, honestly, it's, it's, it's missed shots that are the easiest thing to clean up because generally a lot of these players have the hours to put the shots in. It's just a matter of getting your head in. And I think sometimes it was accuracy, sometimes it was confidence and going up for certain things. I mean, even in the highlight, we saw somebody just backflipped like they had it they were right there in front of it and they backflipped and their team had to come bail them out of that situation so you clean those up I mean you know I, I think the, the competition's already been so close and I think the, the rival series is going to be even closer once people start feeling more comfortable and really gunning for those top two spots to try and get promoted into the RLCS so I, th I think they're going to do pretty well to be completely honest yeah everyone has their eyes set on the RLCS again if you're in the rival series you need to be in the top two at the end to compete against the bottom two from the RLCS to get into the RLCS in the following season. But we're gonna shift gears a little bit here. We have two matches to go in this broadcast. And these two matches are both, are both gonna be best of five. And the winner of each of these two matches will be into league play for the European region of RLCS season four. The loser will be in the rival series. So very important couple matches coming up. And I have, uh, I have the matchups for you as well. The first match we're gonna see after the break is gonna be Soul Gaming versus Method. We saw Method a little bit earlier, and there's a bit of a storyline for Soul Gaming, too. And the match after that will be Air Reality going up against the Leftovers, both teams we saw a little bit earlier. And all four of those teams are going to be vying for a spot in league play for our LCS Season 4 for the European region. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, it's a best of five between Soul Gaming and Method as we complete the spots in league play for Season 4 for the European region.